Okay, so let's take a look at how to do question D here. So we have a, some radical expressions here in our equation, and we need to solve for x. And um, there's two things that we're going to have to look for here. The first thing you got to look at is what are your restrictions on the equation, okay, and then how can we solve it. So our restrictions are basically going to be 3x minus 8 has to be greater than 0 because we can't take the negative, the square root of a negative value. And then we have um, 2x minus 7 is also going to be greater than 0 because we can't take a negative value. So if we solve for x in this case here, we're going to have two values here. We're going to say x is going to be greater than 8 thirds. Okay, 8 over 3. And then we have another restriction here where x is going to be greater than 7 halves. So if we think about this on a number line, what do we have when we um, put these two together? Because do we have a common solution here? So let's just put here uh, zeros right here. Um, seven halves is like, it's going to be 3.5. So this is going to be one, two, three. Let's extend this out a bit. So right about here, we can say is going to be... Uh, 3.5, so where the number is going to be greater than 3.5, that's one, and then x is greater than 8 or 8 thirds is going to be 2.6, so it's going to be somewhere right here, right here. So we've got two values here that we're going to be looking at. So the net <coughs> result for the answer is here is that our restriction here is that we have to be greater than um, this first number here. Um, seven halves okay so that's our net restriction is that we're going to have to be using this as our boundary for the uh, for the radicals okay so any number all numbers have to be greater all solutions have to be greater than seven divided by two or approximately 2.6 okay so that'll take care of our restriction then what we have to do is how do we solve this so what are the steps that we're going to do if we're going to solve it well when we have radical signs here in the, in the expression. The only way to remove those is to square the terms. So it's going to be a little bit messy to do here, but we're going to have root of 3x minus 8. We're going to square that term. Okay, and then whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we're going to take 1 plus 2x minus 7. Okay, and that, that's got the radical sign, but we're going to square the whole thing because we have to include the 1 plus part of it. Okay, so this part here is easy. If we square a radical, we're just going to get the expression underneath the radical sign. So it's 3x minus 8. But when we square this, this is like a, um, exp a binomial expansion. So we're going to have 1 plus root 2 minus 7 times 1 plus root 2 uh, minus 7. Okay, so we square the first term, which is 1. Then we multiply the two terms together, 1 times this, and double it. So that's going to give us 2 root 2x minus 7. Okay, and then we're going to square that last term, which is just going to give us plus 2x uh, minus 7. Okay, because the radical goes away. So now we're, we've just got the case here where we have to collect some like terms. Okay, so I'm just going to rewrite one side of this here so it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, so we're going to have 1 minus 7, which is negative 6. We're going to have the 2x here by itself. And then we're going to have the 2 root 2x minus 7. Okay, so then we can pull the terms over. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. So that's going to give us plus 2. Where it's the negative 8 will become a plus 2. And then we're going to subtract 2x from 3x. So this is going to just leave us x minus 2. Okay, and then we're going to be equal to 2 times 2 times 2 root 2x minus 7 all with the square root sign. Okay, so again, we have a square root sign. We have to get rid of it. So the way we do that is we're going to square both sides again. Okay, so it looks like we're going backwards, but we're eventually going to get rid of all the radical signs. But then we have to do a binomial expansion on this. So this is going to be x squared minus, okay, and then two, negative 2 times x is negative 2x, but we double it, so it's 4x plus 4. And then we're going to square <coughs> this, this term here. So we're going to essentially, we have to multiply this by itself. So 2 times 2 is going to give you 4, or that's 2 squared. 
and then we square the radical sign, so it's going to be 2x minus 7. Okay, and now we are almost there. We can almost get this cleaned up a bit. So 4 times 2 is 8 minus 28. So all we need to do is gather like terms. Okay, so we're going to subtract 8x here. So this is going to give you x squared minus 12x. And we're going to add 28 to 4, so that's going to give us 32. And that whole thing's equal to 0. Okay, so at this point, if we're lucky, we could factor this thing, or we could graph it, or in the worst case, we'd have to use the quadratic formula to figure out what the roots are. Okay, but if just by looking at it here, we need two factors to give us 32, and that add to give you negative 12. Okay, so that's just easy enough because that's going to be a 4 and an 8. Okay, so those are the two that'll work. So the roots of this equation, okay, is equal to 4 and 8. That's going to be your answer. Okay, and our restrictions are that all values have to be greater than 7 halves here. So all the roots have to be at least bigger than 2.6 or 7 divided by 2. So 4 and 8 should work and satisfy that equation. Okay, so that's how you do this question. It's a little bit long because of the repeated squarings to get rid of the radicals. But if you just work it through step by step and go slowly, you should be able to figure that out.